shutter speed, aperture, ISO. These are all really important settings when it comes to taking great photographs. Most good photographers have a handle over these settings and they kind of become an unconscious part of the shooting process. It's kind of like learning to drive a car. You've got the gas pedal, the brake, the clutch, changing gears, and once you've mastered all of that stuff, it kind of becomes unconscious and you're more worried about how to get to your destination than driving the car itself. One thing that I've noticed over the last couple of years, especially with all this new camera tech coming out in the form of these new mirrorless cameras, is that while most photographers have a great handle over their basic settings it seems like there is a fair bit of confusion and also debate over autofocus settings and which ones you should use i wanted to clear this up for you guys because it's a question that i get asked quite frequently what are my autofocus settings and how do i get sharp images every single time i'm currently using the canon r6 this is actually the rp the r6 is filming me right now and some of the settings that i'm going to be talking about in this video are specific to canon cameras but if you've got a mirrorless camera from the last two or three years you should be able to find these settings somewhere in your camera they'll just be in a different part of the menu or they might have a different name all right let's jump into it so there are two main focusing modes that i will use for every single photo that i take the first is face and eye tracking and the second is single point autofocus and believe it or not all the other focus methods in this camera I have intentionally grayed out. That means I can't select them unless I go back into the menu and enable them once again. And I do this so that I don't have to cycle through all of the unused focus methods while I'm on a shoot. And if you want to know how to do that in your Canon R, RP, R6 or R5, I've made a video about that which I'll link in the description below. I use face and eye tracking obviously whenever I'm shooting people, but only on portrait or lifestyle shoots where I have one person as the subject. This focusing mode is really accurate on my R6 and it's really reliable. I find myself missing very, very few images in this mode. And for everything else, I use the single point autofocus mode. So that means anytime that I'm shooting a person and they turn around and face away from the camera, or if their face is too small in the frame to be picked up by the face tracking system, if there's multiple people in the photo, or if I'm shooting an object or a landscape. I've got a button on the back of my camera that is purposefully set up to switch between face tracking and single point. So if my subject turns around and starts walking away from the camera, it only takes me half a second to change that focusing mode to the single point and I don't miss the shot. Now let's talk about the other important setting when it comes to autofocus and that is servo autofocus versus one shot autofocus. So servo autofocus means that so long as you have your finger half pressed on that shutter button or if you're using back button focusing as long as you have the back button pressed it's going to continually focus on your subject. So that means that you can change the distance between the subject and the camera and while you're taking photos theoretically all of those photos should be in focus because it's continuing to focus as you're shooting. So I always use servo when I've got the face tracking enabled. One shot means that after you've half pressed that shutter button, it's not going to focus again until you lift your finger off and half press once more. So the focus is going to be locked wherever you put your focus point before you half press the shutter. And I always use one shot in combination with the single point autofocus mode. I find that selecting a point on the touch screen with my finger is a little bit too slow in most situations. So I'll actually opt for using the center point and then recompose my shot. Now, if you do use this method, you do need to be careful because when you're really close to your subject, recomposing can actually throw off your focus a tiny bit. So in those situations, I would take my time to select the point manually with the touch screen, but for the most part, the focus and recompose method works really well for me. So just like changing from face tracking to single point, I've also got a custom button mapped that will change between servo and one shot. For example, I could go from shooting a person in the frame, hit two buttons and then quickly focus on the mountain behind them. It's simple and it's easy and I get the shot and it means that I don't have to be digging through the menus mid-shoot. All right, so now we're done with all of the nerdy in-camera autofocus settings. I wanted to share with you some general autofocus tips to make sure that you guys get super sharp images every single time. So the first tip is to look for an area of contrast. Your autofocusing system will have a much easier time acquiring focus on points of contrast. So if you can place that focus point over an area of the image that has a defined edge or a pattern rather than a solid area with no detail, then you'll have much better success at your camera acquiring accurate focus. Tip number two is to be diligent and keep focusing your camera as your subject moves or your camera moves using one shot. A huge reason why my photos were inconsistent when I first started shooting was I forgot to refocus my lens after the subject or the camera had moved ever so slightly. And it only takes a slight movement to throw it off completely, especially when you're shooting at shallow apertures. My third and final tip is to take more than one shot. So focus, take a couple of shots, 
refocus again and take even more shots. I don't usually get many negative comments on my videos, but when I do, it's usually people telling me that I tend to spray and pray and take way too many photos. And I totally agree. I do take way too many photos, but luckily we live in a digital camera age. So it doesn't really cost us any extra to take a few additional photos and then just delete the extras. And honestly, this ensures that you don't get stuck in editing with three photos to choose from. And those three photos are all out of focus, especially when you've got a paying client, they are paying you to get sharp images. Also, you probably noticed by now, I don't use the back button focusing method and a lot of people do recommend it. I've tried it out and it's just not for me. Basically, it means that you're separating your focusing button and your shutter button to two separate locations rather than having them on the same button. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about back button focusing. So if you are interested, go and search it up. I really hope this video was helpful and I wish you guys all the best with getting super sharp and crispy images. Consider subscribing down below because that really helps me out and ring the bell if you don't want to miss out on future uploads. I don't know why you wouldn't. You guys are legends for sticking around to the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.